What's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. Today I'm gonna to go very quickly over how to use VST3 plugins and sidechain one plugin to a different track. It's a very simple mixing technique that's used widely in EDM and hip hop, but it's also used widely in rock and roll music and country. It's just a cool nifty mixing trick and it's pretty easy to do in Cubase if you're using VST3 plugins. If you're using VST2 plugins, the setup is a bit more convoluted, but it's possible and I may show that at a later date, but just because I wanna keep this one short and sweet, it will be about VST3s. So the classic use of a side chain is to separate the bass uh, track and the kick drum. So I have a kick drum recorded, it's just quarter notes. Very exciting. And I have a bass track. Now the problem is when I play both of these together, uh, they muddy each other up. They muddy the waters. So what I wanna do is take this bass track and put a compressor on it. But what I want to the, the compressor to key off of is every time the kick drum hits and we can accomplish that with side chaining. So let me show you exactly how I would do that. And I'll bring up my mix console. And here, this is the bass track, it's the retro log. Uh, the kick is just an instance of groove agent. And I'll just use the Cubase compressor. So it's set up. And if we just use it like this, it'll just compress from the signal on the retro log track. Uh, which is fine but that's not what we really want. What we want is for the kick drum to send the signal into this compressor. So in order to do that, we just hit this little button right here and you'll notice the dropdown says activate sidechain. And once that's activated, the compressor will look from input from a separate track. So I just go to my sends and there it is, sidechains, retro log, insert, compressor. I turn that on and you can adjust the send volume. I'll just do it at zero because it appears like this is peaking out at around negative 10, so. Now you can see the kick drum will be affecting the compressor. And what that does is every time the kick drum hits and it's uh, the threshold's at negative 20. So the kick drum looks like it's peaking out around negative 8.7. You can see that down here. Uh, every time the kick drum hits, it's compressing the, the bass signal. So if we make it very dramatic, we'll have this uh, lowered, we'll turn off auto makeup, we'll increase our ratio. And so you'll hear the kick drum every quarter note. And now we'll just listen to the bass track with this listen button right here. And you can even hear the remnants of that little kick drum in the background. Now if I bypass it, this is what the track sounds like. But with the side chain on, and what that does is it clears up the mud. So if we listen to both together, it compresses the bass track every time the kick drum hits and allows them both to shine in the mix. So this has been a very quick tutorial on applying side chain compression to a bass and a kick drum. And I hope that you found it helpful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe. And hey, everybody, take care and have a great day. Bye.